fire weather in Southern California is fairly predictable. In Los Angeles County, we typically see warm, dry, windy conditions hit the Antelope Valley in the spring. The basin experiences a temperature rise in the summer months, followed with the arrival of the hot, dry winds in late summer and blowing hard off and on through the months of November and December. With the windy weather comes more risk of fighting not only wildland fires, but also structure fires. Just as the wind affects the rate of growth of a wildland fire, it does the same with structure fires. Wind brings out oxygen that a structure fire needs to grow. If we fail to control the wind entering a structure, the fire will get bigger. A growing fire puts citizens and firefighters lives at risk while destroying personal property. This Easter is a day of heartache and sadness for the Houston Fire Department. Two firefighters are dead, killed in the line of duty, and investigators are working to find out what went wrong. Those firefighters went inside a burning house but were not able to make it out. And before officials realized they were missing, it was already too late. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Abrams. I'm Adele Uchida. One of the fallen firefighters had been with the department nearly 30 years. The other just a little more than a month. The Houston Fire Department says Captain James Harlow was killed. He'd been with HFD since 1979. Damian Hobbs also died. He'd just graduated from the training facility at the beginning of March. Both were found inside the burned home on Oak Vista and DeLeon. Neighbors say strong winds whipped the flames into a frenzy. It is not known if that played a role in the deaths, but what is known is that this is a very sad day for the Houston Fire Department. Under the right conditions, a fire with a stiff wind blowing at its back can rapidly tear through a structure. This incident in Houston is evidence of the dangers we face when wind, fire, and synthetic materials found in most structure fires meet. UL, NIST, and NIOSH have investigated numerous firefighter fatality incidents that occurred at structure fires where wind was a major factor. We must learn from these incidents so we know how to best fight that next fire where the wind is howling and the smoke is laying sideways as we pull up with our crews. The fire started at 12.07. Just seven minutes later, the first Houston firefighters arrived and immediately went inside the home to battle the blaze. The, the crews were in, in interior attack. Um, at some point uh, during the interior attack, uh, they were doing primary search and uh, um, it was uh, decided to go defensive to pull everybody out. It was then, after firefighters left the burning home, when they learned two of their own were still inside. The fire was, uh, was so intense that it, it took a little while to knock the fire down before we could go back in and find them. As L.A. County firefighters, it is highly possible that we will encounter the same fire the Houston firefighters experienced. We have similar structures, we have similar fuels, or furnishings inside our structures. And we have the same weather conditions. Let's learn from the experts so we can understand how best to control the flow path of a wind-driven structure fire. So now this one was the one uh, we showed yesterday. There was no wind. This is just due to ventilation. So we see the thermal plume going up. We see the smoke collecting at the ceiling. <laughs> the smoke starts to flow down the hallway that connects the bedroom and the living room. We start to see smoke develop, a smoke layer building on the living room ceiling. That smoke now starts to go out into the corridor, heading toward the vent. Here you see it in an IR view. You see that thermal energy heading toward the vent. Notice how directional it is. It's flowing away from the camera position to the south and flowing toward the north toward this vent. And, of course, the target room is located... Uh, between the living room and the bedroom in the hallway there. We transfer enough energy to the glass to get the glass to start to fail, basically the flames hitting the glass to do that. Look what's happening in the bedroom. You see any fire? I can't breathe, right? It's darkened down. The corridor, you see any fire? No. You start to see flashes. The living room, you see any fire? Thermal imaging camera shows that there's a lot of activity going on. We see it pulsing. We see where our neutral plane is. We have fresh air going in low. We have the hot gases coming out high. The vent on the ceiling is unidirectional. It's all flowing out of that. 
So the fire's struggling. It's having trouble breathing. Here's another case, same, same setup, except in this case, we're blowing a 20 mile an hour wind against this window. Again, the, the corridor is fine for a firefighter right now. You're crawling in the cool air. The hot gases are above your head. You could be in there for 10, 15 minutes, something like that, until the window fails. Once the window fails, we have good mixing. We have, we're training more oxygen to get better burning. And look at what happens. This is what firefighters have referred to as a blowtorch effect. This is what the firefighters in Vandalia said they saw. They're trying to move down the hall and said the door was full of flames, top to bottom, and they couldn't get to it. What do you notice about the flames coming out of the window? They're pulsing. So we've got a 350 Chevy with a six foot blade giving us a steady 20 miles an hour and yet the flames are pulsing. So what I didn't understand in 1999 was that this thing's under such high pressure basically it's burping itself. It can't, it can't release all the pressure through the exit vent and so it's, it's got a, it overpressures the wind and lets it out and then it sucks back in. That's why it was pulsing. So how do we control that? Well, one way to control that is if you can maintain control of the exit, keep the, keep the door closed. With the door closed, we can't even drop the glass, right? Because it's, it's maintaining pressure in there to fight the window. We take the glass out the rest of the way. The fire's still not very happy. You see a lot of heavy soot inside. It's not burning very efficiently. It's under pressure. You see the smoke moving around the door through the keyhole and everything else, but, but it's not burning very cleanly. And it's still protecting the hallway, the corridor here, the public corridor, until remotely with the steel bar, we swing that door open. And then again, we'll see the same kind of change as we did in the previous case. Because by opening that door, we've now completed the flow path. Right, we give, yes sir. Does the rate of heat transfer go up exponentially or is it like, or is it on a steady <coughs> curve? Exponentially. Okay. One more from this test here, because again, from the flow path perspective. <clears throat> what we're going to do in this experiment is let the fire develop, let the gases get to the point uh, that they're so fuel rich and hot enough that once they get out of this vent, which is dumping into our 30 foot by 40 foot exhaust hood, um, they're going to start to ignite. That's where they're going to have the first opportunity to mix with more oxygen and they're going to auto-ignite. And then after they auto-ignite, we're going to take a hose stream and introduce it in the front window. Here's a, the video view, here's the thermal imaging view. And uh, see what impact that has on these burning gases throughout this apartment and corridor system. So again, the flames are pulsing in and out. We see flashes of fire in some cases as, it, as it's burning and going through the system. We're going to see a little bit of flame come up the stack and then it's going to get fuel rich again. <clears throat> you see a little glow there. Again, you're seeing some glimpses. And now we've auto ignited the gases. We're getting ready to flow water. Water's on. <coughs> Fire's gone. Wait a minute, what about all this fire? Well, basically what you have there are the remains of the bed, the dresser, the tables, the chair, that the water droplets aren't hitting. They're still burning. So you have a bunch of incipient fires in that room, something that's very, very manageable with your turnout gear and your hose line. What you can't manage is that big volume of burning gases that's moving at 15 miles an hour over your head or over your body. What this hose stream is doing is taking that those gases away, right? It's taken, it's taken the hot gas layer effect away. It's, and it's doing it not only in this room, but throughout the length of the flow path. Remember, the conditions that the Houston firefighters face can happen every day in Los Angeles County. So go out, drill, and become aware of your district's daily weather patterns. Take this training serious. It could save your life someday.